Excellent. So let's get right into it. So everybody, welcome to the webinar. And today we're really going to be talking about a couple of different things um, and about how Marathi's Container Runtime can be used on Windows Server with Azure. So a little bit about me. Um, at the start, my name is Kevin Ung. I'm a Senior Solutions Architect for Marathi's. And really my work is to help folks uncover issues and guide them to a solution. So really what is happening with Marantis Container Runtime support on Azure and Windows Server? Uh, how would that affect your environment? And how do you minimize the impact of this change in your production environment? And these are some of the things that we will cover in this webinar. And in addition, we will also walk through the core features that make life easier for developers and security teams alike, including various components within Marantis Container Runtime, which we'll call MCR for short, and how that improves the developer experience while providing enterprise-grade security. Really coming to the big question, the reason why you're all here today, I'm using Rantis Container Runtime, and you may know it at, by its former name, Docker Enterprise Edition on Windows. And what would happen to my environment? So to answer that question, let's take a step back and look at the details of Microsoft's May 2023 Windows Server updates, and what it's all about. Previously, Microsoft has a partner agreement with Mirantis to distribute Mirantis Container Runtime on its Windows Service and Azure equivalents. And as announced in late 2021, uh, Microsoft has chosen not to continue that agreement with Mirantis, uh, so through which the Windows Server users will receive built-in licensing and support for MCR with runtime support provided by Mirantis. So really effective May 1st of this year, um, really practically speaking, ending in April 30th of this year, um, Windows servers with containers images published by Microsoft on the Azure gallery will be depreciated. So essentially the ones that you see on screen right now um, will be affected, which means that if you're using these images on Azure after April 30th of this year, Microsoft will remove all versions of these images from the gallery. So. As a result of that, uh, users will kind of lose the ability to provision VMs using the Windows Server with container images. So if, again, if you're using any one of these images that you see on screen over here, that actually will be gone from the gallery. You can't provision new VMs from that. Um, and at the same time, you'll also lose the ability to restore VMs from backup because again, these images are no longer there so that you can't even actually utilize this within Azure for backups. It, it'll kind of be rendered inoperable. Um, and, and thirdly, automations using affected images can potentially fail. So for example, um, service fabric will no longer be able to spin machines up and down because uh, operations such as scale out, re-image, uh, service healing, or zero service fabric node types, they're kind of based specifically on these VMs, right? So if you're using these SKUs within your uh, service fabric uh, specifications, uh, it Azure won't be able to find that anymore. So discover, uh, disaster recovery automations rely on these backups will also be disrupted. So you kind of look out for those. Um, now, on the other hand, if you're using the, if you've already got images provisioned, that's staying there, right? So your, your VMs won't go away. Uh, it's just that um, at the end of that, the Microsoft support ends. Uh, you no longer receive your CD security patches and upgrades within those VMs. And they're normally released on a six to eight week cycle. Um, so we do actually do a lot of updates uh, on the security side. So you know, on the plus side, the VMs will kind of stay there. We'll talk about how we can actually help you with that uh, moving on forward as well. At the same time, if you're installing the runtime via the Docker Microsoft Provider API, you know, you're doing your uh, provisioning directly on Windows servers, that functionality will also be depreciated. So we have to look out for how, uh, if you're creating new Windows services directly, how we can actually support you with that. Right? So that's kind of the background. So really what happens now? Well, overall, there's no real change in the container runtime or the applications using uh, Marantis Container Runtime. The only change really is the entitlement and the support. So instead of Microsoft distributing MCR, uh, starting from May 1st, uh, Marantis will directly support the customers using the standalone MCR or the Windows with Container Virtual Machine Images published on the, mature, uh, the, the Azure Marketplace. Okay, um, so as you know, as as uh, the infrastructure provider or the uh, runtime provider, Marantis is committed to ensuring clients remain in a supported state 
after the software removal. And you know, we could provide the easiest, most secure option using MCR uh, with support directly from Rantis. And we do have a transition program for all impacted clients. So you know, feel free to please reach out to us so we can actually make sure that you stay in support and there's no disruption to your uh, environments, right? production or otherwise. So going forward, there's a couple of different options to ensure your workloads run seamlessly within Windows. Um, one, you can use the Marantis provided Windows Server Marketplace VM image. Uh, the cost of the image will kind of import, uh, include the cost of support and license of the runtime. Uh, we'll look at how to deploy that in a second as well. So if you're building and running Docker containers using the CLI with Kubernetes and Swarm, um, or you need a higher level of security, right? so for example, FIPS 140-2, you may want to pursue this option. Um, you can also use the Azure Image Builder service to build your own images based on whatever version of Windows Server you like and bundle the Marantis container runtime available from Marantis uh, and also the marketplace into that image. Um, deploy the service images and deploy container runtime uh, through your automated process. Um, or could obtain an annual support contract. This is what we call a continuity um, option where you don't really have to do any deployment. Uh, really, the only thing is make sure that you are supported with whatever version of um, uh, container runtime you have in, in the Windows VM version. So this way, you know, the advantage of this is really there's no need for any data migration. You can leave your workload running. We'll just provide the support that is needed. Right? The only thing is you might have to look out for is the uh, the Windows um, version. You'll need to use Windows 2019 and later leave. I think we may have a 2016 version in Azure Marketplace as well. But we'll look at the details in a second. Right? Um, now, other thing is, if you're using the Azure Resource Manager to deploy images, you may need to look at new strategies because the image from Microsoft will be removed. So you may need to move that onto the uh, the Azure uh, Marketplace Mantis images. Okay, so we'll look at how that can be deployed uh, really quickly. Now, within the Azure Gallery, Mantis has published a Windows Server virtual machines. Um, you can find these images by searching for the Marantis container runtime in the Azure marketplace. But when we go in there, uh, type in Marantis container runtime, you'll actually see the three different server versions available in the marketplace. Uh, we do have Windows 2016, 2019, and 2022. Um, we have 2016 there mainly for uh, those folks that are actually still using that for uh, more um, uh, long-term service uh, engagements with perhaps their, uh, your end consumers, uh, or you have some workloads that potentially need that, but you got to look out for, um, in a Windows server, they are actually starting to uh, talk about depreciating 2016 as well. So you might want to look at migrating onto 2019 and above. Okay. So once you find that, it's just a simple matter of clicking on the actual option, uh, whichever one it is, and just it, get it now, just like how you deploy any normal virtual machines on Azure. Now, these pre-built images include a copy of the Windows Server, a copy of Marantis Container Runtime, and everything's already pre-configured, so you can actually spin up your workloads fast. Now, for a more detailed walkthrough, our, our Marantis Senior Software Engineer and Mobi Maintainer, Bjorn Mirgaard, has actually created a tutorial that's available on the Marantis YouTube channel. So, you know, please, Go check it out. It's actually pretty detailed. It's got step-by-step -step instructions on how to do so. It will actually help you as well when you're deploying this on Azure. Now, if you're using Service Fabric um, to deploy your workloads, these uh, what you're seeing on screen is the actual uh, images that are available to you, right? your uniform resource names. Uh, that can all be found using the Azure PowerShell command shown on the top of the screen. Okay, so when you're going through your Service Fabric, fabric configurations. Uh, it's just a matter of putting in the right SKU, publish your offer, and then um, you know, follow the guidance of scaling up a node uh, for your SKU upgrades. For those of you that would prefer provisioning your Windows Server images and deploying Marantis Container Runtime directly, uh, you could actually deploy Marantis Container Runtime directly on Windows Servers through a, a couple of very simple steps. It's pretty much a, a, a script that you create. Um, just have to make sure that you have the right support and licensing for that. Um, go onto the Marantis website and 
they actually look for Atlantis container runtime for Windows Server. And um, also the documentation, which I would actually include at the end of this as well, to actually go through the steps of deploying um, the Marathis container runtime image onto your Windows server. And again, uh, Bjorn has actually created a step-by-step -step instruction on how to do that in our YouTube channel. So you know, feel free to go have a look at that as well for all of the instructions. But essentially what'll happen is within PowerShell, you just go ahead and invoke the installation script. Um, it actually go through and do the installation for you. And you'll have a working version of Mantis Container Runtime for you to actually start your development or your uh, deployments into your environments. So talking about some of the core features on why we want, you want to want to use uh, Mantis Container Runtime or MCR versus just open source Docker. Mantis Container Runtime provides the core developer tools that you, is needed for container development. Um, many folks would be using Docker Desktop, perhaps developers on, on their own machines for local development. Um, and Docker Desktop utilizes the, uh, the community edition of Docker Runtime uh, for their environments, which of course includes your APIs, the, um, uh, the builds kits and, and, and the um, environment for you to run your development uh, workloads on. But once you put that into production, you want to make sure that the production environment is actually hardened for enterprise grade use. So you'll obviously want a Windows native container, you know, complete with the Docker interface. So there's no need to change your environment from the developers to your, um, your production environments or even pre-part environments. In addition, it provides the hardening aspects such as the compliance with security specs, including FIPS 140-2, FedRAMP, uh, Dice of Stig, which we'll cover off in um, uh, a bit later and also in following webinars. Um, the Marantis Container Runtime Cryptographic Module is certified uh, by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And it's also uptime assurance, support, and upgrades from world class experts in cloud native technologies. We have updates in six to eight week cycles, keeping you up to date and safe from the latest vulnerabilities and attacks um, that are being found and are available out in the wild. As a quick check, a, a, a comparison, side-by-side -side comparison of your know, open source community edition um, Docker versus Maractus Container Runtime, uh, we do provide um, not only the support, but we actually go through rigorous testing processes for multiple operating systems and comprehensive situation models. So you see in the support over here, we actually support multiple um, operating systems, and this is being essentially being certified that we definitely work within these environments, including, of course, Windows Server. So you get the seamless experience between your various environments, uh, be it Windows, Linux, whatever it is, uh, you know it definitely work exactly the same, no matter what environment you're looking for. Um, we also provide training by world-class trainers on not only the Marantis products, but also general concepts, such as containerization, orchestration, and also virtualization. Um, and last but not least, and I think I've probably went through this quite a few times, there's also enterprise-grade security, which I'll talk about in the following slides. According to the SysDig 2023 Cloud Native Security and Usage Report, um, an alarming 87% of container images running in production have actually critical or high severity vulnerabilities. And, and that's actually up from 75% from a year ago. And you know, after digging a little bit deeper into these vulnerabilities, really only 25% are exploitable. But at the same time, that's still a concern because, you know, to be honest, none of us would like to be part of that 25%. So the security features of Marantix Container Runtime, including FIPS 140-2 validation and image signature verification, will help companies avoid becoming tomorrow's headline for the wrong reasons. So let's, I've mentioned FIPS 140-2 a, a number of times, and I know um, the more security savvy amongst us would know what that is. Um, but for those that are perhaps unfamiliar with that, let me talk a little bit about that. Um, and in order to talk about FIPS, we actually need to take a step back and talk about um, the company called, or the institution called NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. And they are an agency of the US Department of Commerce. And this really is an institution that um, is in charge of providing standards, um, security, and also cloud standards 
So they have published many important guides, such as the definition of cloud computing, um, you know, and kind of relevant uh, in, in more recent times as well, the guide on zero trust architecture. And that's you know, important, uh, well, more relevant um, these days because there is a mandate for all governmental agencies um, to adopt zero trust architecture within the US. And as a result, we're seeing some of our customers as well finding that mandate coming down to them if you're working with any of governmental agencies to also adopt some of these uh, standards. Um, and then obviously FIPS 140-2, which essentially outlines the security requirements for cryptographic modules. And this is where we're validated in. So let's talk a little bit about FIPS 140-2. And this, um, you know, as a note as well, will be superseded by FIPS 140-3, which is actually quite similar. Um, but FIPS 140-2 is a standard that handles cryptographic modules and the ones that organizations use to encrypt data both at rest and in motion. So between different components, let's say, for example, the, ru the runtime, right? So FIPS 140-2 has four different levels of security, as you'll see on top of the screen, uh, with level one providing the component level security and level four being a fully hardened system. And level one essentially has the simplest requirements. It really requires production grade equipment and at least you know, one tested encryption algorithm. So this must be a working encryption algorithm and not one that's not been authorized for use. So what do some of our customers do with FIPS? And you know, before we even do that, what level of FIPS are we validated in? Oh, so we are here because we're providing the runtime. So we provide the, um, the component of your individual uh, uh, encryption that, so you know, our customers, um, some of them, if they're using the community edition, they don't have FIPS. Some of them need to have that cryptographic library built into their process within the actual application build process or even the, the, the infrastructure build process for their security or have someone OEM it, right? And they use that to then certify their own product. And because of that process, and that process is sometimes a little bit more involved, it kind of takes away the um, developer's effort from actually developing uh, you know, consumer-facing code and rather they're developing things that are actually becoming the plumbing. Um, customers reach out to us and say, you know what, let's use the Marantis Container Runtime. We've already got the FIPS 140-2 validation, and they use that to certify their own product as well, which then includes achieving certification for the full stack because the runtime is already validated, then everything else what kind of get us, gets out of the way of everything else. Now, we'll cover FIPS in more depth later a webinar called, uh, you know, Why FIPS Matters, uh, Validated Security for Secure Software Supply Chain. So if you're interested in finding more about FIPS, um, how that affects your um, workloads in your company, uh, you know, feel free, please, please do uh, you know, attend that. And we'll dive into much more detail on how to achieve FIPS, what the different levels are, and what you may need to be able to be fully hardened, um, or what is a, a, um, a reasonable hardening for most companies. Like I mentioned, um, Marantis, we do have an updated certification for FIPS 140-2 validation. So that really tells um, customers a couple of different things. Uh, first of all, it means that security is important to us as a company, and we do want to provide a high level of security for our customers, you know, such as yourself. Uh, second, an updated certification means that we've kind of expanded the reach of FIPS throughout more of our product portfolio. We started off with Marantis Container Runtime, we actually have now FIPS 140-2 validation within the orchestration, which is our Marantis Kubernetes engine, and also k 0 which is our lightweight uh, Kubernetes orchestration uh, platform. And that's now covered and certification as a key part of our portfolio. And as mentioned earlier, many of our customers go through their own FIPS certification and our software is now part of their software, uh, software stack. So this certification really tells the customers that we won't be in their way of achieving their certification or your certification, right? So once um, you use the container runtime, you don't have to think about that anymore. Think about the different layers of your software stack. And for anybody that is not pursuing FIPS certification, it really means we have secure communications. So even if you're not trying to achieve FIPS for things such as FedRAMP, or even if you're using, if you're in a high security um, industry such as 
let's say perhaps um, consumer facing, uh, financial facing, uh, we provide elevated security so that you and your customers will have uh, uh, a peace of mind that there is going to be no issues with the infrastructure. So on top of the inscription, so we've got the communication side down packed. Now, what about the workload that you're putting on top of that? So with that, we actually have a security through image signing and signature validation and verification. And built in to the Marantis Container Runtime is Content Trust. And Content Trust provides an easy way for you to sign images as well as validate it. So how does that work? I mean, think about it. When you sign an image, what you're doing is you're certifying that a particular tag should be linked with that image's digest. Uh, but more than that, you're certifying that the particular tag belongs to the collection of publicly consumable tags for your image. And that users really shouldn't trust tags outside of that collection. So if anybody is name squatting or doing something that is really close to what your tag is, that shouldn't be trusted. And there's no real way to invalidate something that is signed um, by image signing aside from revoking your signing key. Uh, but it, at the same time, in content trust, removing or replacing something from your collection and republishing it will invalidate the old or vulnerable content. So if anybody tries to um, come in and try to impersonate you, that'll actually invalidate the entire thing. Okay? In addition, your collection also expire after a period of time. So you as a maintainer will have to come in and periodically uh, recertify that your collection is still valid. So this way that ensures no one will be able to install or old or unmaintained content. And finally, Content Trust will enable you to specify multiple collaborators. So you can actually have multiple signers within your organization um, and others that could actually sign your content with their own keys. So that allows more seamless integration with your day-to-day -day workflows, your processes, instead of creating just another bottleneck, right? So if I'm the only signer within the organization and I'm you know, out sick or whatever, that stops the entire operation. But now if you have multiple signers, it's good. You know, have backup and backups and backups and everybody actually get, um, get their workloads into production without any issues. And as you can see on screen over here, signature verification will really just prevent unauthorized containers to run not only in the runtime, but also in the orchestrators using Marantis Container Runtime. So as on the left, you see what happens when you deploy a container directly onto MCR. And on the right, you see what happens if you try to deploy using Kubernetes uh, within Marantis Kubernetes Engine. Yeah, so that's, um, that's comprehension uh, signing of um, uh, the image security signing. And really turning it on is very simple as well. So with Marantis Container Runtime, all you're doing is you're setting the environment variable Docker content trust to one, that's it, right? So when you do that, any pull, any builds or run operations will now require signature verification in, your, in order to proceed. And any push orders, uh, sorry, push operations will also require that you sign the image that you push. And if you're using Kubernetes Kubernetes engine, it's even easier, simple toggle over here, click on that and you'll have content trust running. So went through quite a lot and Pretty, pretty short time, but um, in summary, you can still easily run and use Marantis Container Runtime across multiple versions of Windows Server with Azure by either utilizing the image in your Azure Marketplace, uh, obtain a license from Marantis Container Runtime and deploy it directly to Windows Server, or utilize Service Fabric, of course, and the uh, Marantis SKUs to deploy your um, runtimes. And by that, you'll be able to continue using Container Runtime that is trusted for mission-critical workloads with FIPS 140-2 cryptographic module uh, supporting security tooling for government and highly regulated industries. You have a runtime that is an integral part of a secure supply chain with the ability to enforce digital signing of images and also integrate with registries such as the Marantis Secure Registry for vulnerability scanning and signing. And you have a runtime that runs natively within Windows at the same time preferred by, or actually in some cases required, by uh, software vendors and many governmental agencies. So to find out more, um, visit Marantis.com or scan the QR code on screen to jump directly to the website. It's been great to be able to present these changes to you. Um, look forward to seeing all of you in the upcoming webinars. And you know, let's, let's take some time over here to see if there's any questions and if there's anything that can help answer for you. Kevin, thank you so, so much for walking us through how to use Marantis Container Runtime on Windows Server with Azure. Any 
last words that you would like to share with the audience before we disconnect? Yeah. So, and I appreciate the time that um, you know spent with us. It's been great uh, presenting. You now, feel free to reach out to any of us. And, and as Edward said, you know, on restalkrantus dot com, um, and we will certainly help you with uh, ensuring continuity of your workloads. Once again, thank you all for joining us here today, Kevin. Thank you for being with us as well. I hope each and every single one of you have a fantastic day, evening, and night. Thank you, and goodbye.